Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, let me take two, three questions before we start, if you have any questions to me, and then we can start this. Uh, this lecture slides are already on Avenue. Uh, I've also stated in the announcement that I have pushed in uh, your midterm repositories the, the, the model answers for the questions you got. So you can also bold these and look into them <clears throat> to see how, uh, how you have done in, in the exam before getting your grades next week. Uh, as I said in the last lecture, hopefully by Monday or worst case Tuesday, you will get the midterm grades. For those who just accepted uh, lab two assignment yesterday or today, I guess there is a problem with GitHub uh, accepting invitations. At least some of you are facing this. So if this is the case, so I have, um, first of all, as I, as I have said, don't wait for the last minute uh, because as, as, as you see, some problems may arise in the last day uh, that you could have avoided them or at least better manage them if uh, if you started earlier. But anyway, maybe this this last couple of weeks were kind of special because of the midterms. So what you can do is I posted the midterm starter code on Avenue as well. Uh, you can work on this and send this by email to uh, Salah, like the TA responsible for, for the labs. Um, I've tried to push my changes so I can pull solutions without merging and it doesn't let me push. So yeah, you cannot, so Nicole, you cannot push uh, because you would have a conflict. So you would have to pull, if, if, you, if you did changes to your midterm uh, after pushing this, I mean, in the exam time and you, you did other changes, the, then these changes are local to your repo. Then if you try to, push this, the push will not go through because you will be overwriting my changes, which are the solutions. So the push will not allow you to push unless you have the most up-to-date version of the rebel, right? Um, I guess because in my last change, I have added extra files that didn't change well. I removed this code or whatever uh, in, in the studio. So I made a few changes to your own files, but most of, of, of my changes are adding files. So there wouldn't be a conflict, I believe. Uh, there wouldn't be a conflict in um, in uh, there, there wouldn't be a conflict in, in in if you try to do a bowl and then merge, but you have to bowl before you push. Otherwise, it it will not allow you. I can't accept the lab on GitHub on. Okay, so I guess this is with regard to lab two back again. As I was discussing right now, I have pushed in the starter code on on the announcement on Avenue. Um, download this work on the lab and send this by email to uh, Salah, like the TA responsible for, for labs. Okay. Okay, so let's discuss this kind of interesting topic in, in, in C programming. So one thing that is a limitation in, in C compared to uh, almost any modern, um, any modern programming language is uh, is that C is not OOB, is not object oriented, which means you cannot create classes, for example, in, in, in C. Sorry guys, I guess I, I will lose power back again. So give me a second and then I will I will call you back. Okay, so hopefully we should we should be good. Um, I I hope you can still see the slides. So yeah, what I was saying is C is not an object-oriented programming language, which means you cannot create classes. And we will see in in Java what really we mean by OOB and why it's very powerful, right? But C has to some extent limited support for that, and this is done through structures. So if you are familiar with classes in Python, I'm not sure if you covered this in your first year uh, Python course, but structures, 
you can think of this as the early version of a class. So what is, what is the mentality behind all of this? So for those who attended the tutorial in the morning, because lab three is, um, is already building on structures, you see the need for structures. And, and let's discuss this a little bit more. The main, so what we said in the morning is assume you want to create a database for the students, for example, in 2SH, we have, I don't know, like 280 students. Every student has his own grade in, in labs, in midterm, in final. A student has an ID and first name, last name. So one student is one entity, right? The problem is this student has multiple members or components. Like, as I said, the name, which can be a string, the ID, which usually an integer, you will never see like a negative ID, for example, uh, uh, or, or a float point ID. So it's a positive integer. And then also grades can be float or double. So one student can have multiple members that are associated together for the same student, and they are of different types. So far, with our knowledge in C that we discussed until now, we have no way in C to do that, right? Because you can think of, I can have an array of students, but array, all the elements of the array has one type and that's a single type. You cannot have one entry that is double and float and int in the same type, right? So the way to do this is to through structures. So a structure is allowing you to define your own type and this type can have multiple members all are within your own uh, structure, which in this case can be a student that has the, the ID and the first name, last name and grades, right? So one other example or motivation in, in structures, assume we want to write like a math library or, or something to deal with math equations. So we want to deal with monomials. So monomials is something that is like um, a number multiplied by X to the power something, right? It has a single term, like five, uh, x to the power two, for example. The problem here is you have, if you look into this monomial, and select the pen here. If you look into this one, you have two different elements, the coefficient and the power, correct? And although you can assume that the power is an n type, the coefficient generally is a floating point or double type. For example, we can have a 0.3 as a coefficient or a negative number 2.3. So these are two different elements and they can be of different types. And the interesting part is it's very hard to deal with these two members separately because both they are representing one entity, right? Which is your monomial, like five multiplied by X to the power something. So the coefficient and the power both together construct the monomial. If you separate them, dealing with them would be very hard, right? So if we want to handle these values using the same name, which is our monomial, uh, then we said, if we can we use arrays similar to the student case? No, because in arrays, all the array elements has to be of the same type and one entry holds only a single, a single uh, value or variable. And the way to do this is through structures in C. So simply you define your own structure, which is using the reserved word struct. Inside the structure, you put all the elements or what we call the members of your structure. Here we have only two members, the coefficient and the power. As you can see, the coefficient has the type float why the power has the type int, and then you give your structure a name, mono one, for example, or monomial or, or anything, right? By doing this, you, you define the structure called mono one that has two members, coefficient and power, and you can deal with mono one as one entity together. And this is the important thing about structures or as we'll see later in Java classes as well, that you have multiple things, one big entity that has multiple members, but it represent one uh, abstraction here in this case it's a monomial in lab it's a student so it, all of them you can call using the like a single name right like mono one here so what we do here is declaring a structure we will see in next slide different ways of declaring structures and yeah, it has two members and we already discussed this one way of initializing the values as you will see you can refer to the members using the dot operator and this is the first time we see the dot operator in c because it can be read as the member of. So we are asking mono one, which is our structure, dot coefficient, which is the coefficient of mono one. And we are assigning it the value of 0.3 and then the power, the value of four. Is there any question so far?
Is there any reason we get handicapped in last by not getting to use all functions and header like strings, for example, or math? Do they start in at index? I'm not sure if I get I get uh, interrupted for a second or so, but you guys please confirm you are hearing me. So, so actually, uh, although this is an outside question that is not related to the topic, let me answer it. So yes, there is there is a very important point about not letting you use all the capabilities of a certain header file. So 2SH4 purpose is not to have a product. I mean, you you guys are not developing something that is really very meaningful or a product based in labs. It's mainly for educational purpose, right? So make sure you can consume the knowledge you learn in lectures through labs, right? This knowledge is an understanding, for example, how to go through a string, how to concatenate strings. So if you use these helper functions, this doesn't allow you to test and develop your own implementation. So this is the main point. It's, it's like think of labs as an educational purpose. I mean, if you are in a project, you can use whatever you want to use in industry, for example, as far as you get the functionality correct. But here we are not developing a product. We are The product is you getting educated, right? This is one reason why we constrain using some of the already existing uh, functions. What is the one? multiple monomial? What is you want multiple? We will come into this Salah right now, how to de define multiple objects of the same structure. What did you clear monon as a structure variable? We will come into this as well, Yan how We are just showing here uh, the, um, like the definition itself, Jack. If you multiply the structure by two, we both, we will come into this as well, Jack. What are the operations we do in structure? Okay, so given that most of your questions, guys, are kind of advanced one later in the lecture, let's, let's move forward and uh, we will be answering uh, all these questions, hopefully. So just to, this is some kind of theory-based thing, like a structure, as we said, consists of multiple variables. Those variables are not necessarily of the same type. They can have different types and they are grouped together given a structure name. And we said that we call the, the, like the variables inside a structure members and they can be of different type. Good. This is the example we have been working on. And in the first example, I'm initializing. So one way to initialize the structure is to just assign it the initial values. And the way this works is the first value will go to the first member, the second value will go to the second member, et cetera, et cetera. So the assignment happens in order, similar to declaring an array and initializing it, right? If you initialize an array, the first value you put in your brackets will go to the first element, second to the second, third to the third, et cetera, right? So the same thing here, the first value you put in the initialization will go to the first member until you go to the last one. And then, uh, uh, yeah, this is another initialization. You can just assign different variables. What we do here is we define two different structures, mono one and mono two. But as you can see, both they are the same thing. And here comes, I guess, the last question, which is, what if I want to have multiple variables of the same structure? Or in, in OOB terminology is objects, right? So how can I have one object of the same structure? Multiple objects of the same structure, right? So first of all, we see how we can define a structure. So one way to declare a structure is, this is the one that we covered in the previous slide, is just use the reserved word struct, list all the members after opening the bracket, and then give it a name. Maybe you can initialize it or not, but based, based on whatever you prefer, right? Another way of doing this is to say, I'm going to define a structure. I am going to give the name here at the beginning. I'm calling it monomial. In this case, you can call it also anything. And this is, later you can say struct monomial. So now you defined a monomial structure. Later, you can say, I'm going to define an object or a variable of type monomial and give it an initial value. And you can also define another variable of the same monomial thing by using the, the reserved word struct, right? So this is defining a structure, here declaring or initializing or, or defining multiple objects of this structure and initializing their value, right? So by doing this, you don't have to write the definition twice because it, it makes no sense. In the lab, for example, assume you have, uh, in, in 2SH, we have 280 students. It doesn't make sense to define a separate structure for everyone because it's going to be uniform. Every student would have exactly the same structure. You only need to define it once and then create 280 objects or whatever you would prefer from the same structure, good? So, by doing this, 
each time I need to define an object, I need to use the received word struct, right? Is there an easier way of doing this? Yes, there is a much easier way, and this is the one that we are going to use. I, I advise you to use, and, and, and everyone almost uses in, in professional programming, but we just wanted to cover all possible ways of doing structures. What is this? It's to use a reserved word uh, called type def or type definition, right? Why type definition? Because as I started the lecture with, structure is nothing other than a normal variable that C allows you to define yourself. So you come up with your own type. So you can deal with a structure as an int later, like a normal type where you can define objects of or members or variables of, right? So to do this, this is, this, this is what, we, uh, what we used in the previous, uh, previous slide. The thing that we add here is we use the type def to define or to give another name to our uh, structure. We call it monom. Later, each time I want to define variables of, or, or, or another way of doing it is just write the type dev directly in the structure and then here monom. So this one is the one that is most commonly used because it's the easiest. So let's, let's just explain it a little bit. All, all what we said before was just for, I would say, uh, making sure we comprehensively cover all possible options. But this is the one that really makes most sense and the one that is I, if you understand, I guess it, it, would, it would be enough to use, right? You define or declare a structure as follows. First, you use the type def reserved word, which means I'm going to define my own type right now, good? Then you use the reserved word struct because this type you are going to define is a structure. You give the members as before, and then at the end, you give your structure a name and a semicolon. By doing this, later, you can just define any variable of the type monom, similar to when you say int x, you can just say monom x, right? So you can use monom as if it's your own type, right? So this is what you really, it's the easiest to use first, and second is the most straightforward way to write a structure, define it, and later declare objects. So if you've got questions here, please ask. Is this equivalent to use the dot operator? We will come into the dot operator as we have seen, like dot coefficient. We will we'll discuss it more now for the dot operator. Can structure contain methods like classes? No, Derek, you cannot have, this is one difference between structures and classes. You cannot have uh, functions inside the structures. How would I initialize mono one like this? Same as before. Yeah, you can just say equal and then give it the value. So you can do equal and then give it, I don't know, point three and then four, something like this, just exactly the same way, good? Okay, so given now we, we know how to define structures easily, let's, let's grow, go through some of the examples and we will, uh, we will take the question about the dot operator. So as we said, the dot operator is, can be read off as the member of. So for example, after you here declare, so here you declare your type, here you declare an object or a variable of type monom and you call it mono one and you initialize its values. Later on, you can deal with the cof, like the members of mono one by using the dot operator. For example, mono one dot power should give you the four. If you increase like pre-increment mono one dot power, you can use whatever math operation you can use it ends because at the end, Mono one dot power is a symbol int, right? Just an, an integer here. So any operation you can do an int, you can really do in mono one dot power. Good. So if, if so far we are good, we will start making things a little bit complex by combining structures with pointers because pointers will come always in anything, right? A pointer is the address of a certain variable. We just said right now that a structure, an object of a structure is also kind of a variable that you define its own type. So you can define a pointer to a structure. For example, here, I can define a pointer, a pointer of, of type monom, which means it's going to point to monom and it gets the address of mono one. Now, if you want to access the elements of mono one through pointer, if you forget about this line, what is the way I would be able to access the elements of mono ones through pointer? 
from what we discussed in the previous two lectures, the most straightforward way is, okay, here I have mono one. Here I have my pointer. By this line, I'm assigning the address of pointer to mono one. So if I want to access the elements of mono one or deal with mono one through the pointer, the only thing we know is dereferencing, right? So you can just say pointer. This is completely equivalent to say mono one. And then later you can use say dot power, for example, right? Because what we do here is dereference pointer, which is giving you mono one, and then you can use the member operator. An added feature in C, which helps you access the elements of the structure directly through the pointer without dereferencing is this arrow thing. This is completely equivalent to this one, right? And instead of just doing dereferencing, you say pointer, because it's a pointer for a structure to access the elements, I will use the arrow, right? Which is completely equivalent to the dot for, for the structure itself. So the general rule is to access the elements of the structure, you either need the dot operator if you are dealing with the variable structure itself, or you need the arrow operator if you are dealing with a pointer to the structure, good? We will see some examples if this seems to be a little bit complex, but if you've got questions, please ask. So the order in which the variables are declared in the structure determines how you declare the values when make, yeah, it determines the order how you initialize them, Arjun, in, in a way. Does the first value always correspond to the first? That's correct, yeah. Always goes in the order. For example, here, point three, again, will always go to the first one, but will go to the second one. And, and this is not a new thing for structures. It, this is a mentality of any programming language. This question, you could have completely asked it for functions as well, right? When you call a function from another function, you pass certain input parameters, but you pass them in their order, right? So the first one goes to the first one, the second one goes to the second one. So the order is inherently, is the convention between the caller and the coolie. The same thing here. The order is the convention between the object and the elements or the members of the structure. Good. Okay, so structures and functions. Again, structures are normal variables, so I can deal with them by passing them to a function or returning them from the function. One thing you need to know though is if you are passing a, a structure as an input to a function, that means the function will have access to all the members of the structure, but it has access to these members by value, right? So it doesn't change them. It's not able to change them, even if array members as well. We know from before that arrays are passed as by default by reference, so the function can modify them except that if they are members of a structure, right? Because you pass the structure itself, not the array. So in this case, everything is passed by value, good? So here, let's have an example to make sure we, uh, we kind of understand what's going on. Here I'm defining a structure for our monomial. It, it has a coefficient power, use type def, and then inside the main, I'm just defining multiple variables of this uh, monomial and then I want to write a function called product. So let's, uh, you know what, let's say, try to implement this one. Let's see if we have enough function, have enough time. I would just open the compiler and hopefully we should, uh, we should have enough time to look into this. Um, Take this for now as a copy. Give me a second and I will share with you the, the compiler one. Okay, good. So let me share this screen with you and hopefully you are able to see. This time I'm trying a different compiler, so hopefully should be, can I just close this? Okay, so what do we have here? So I'm just trying to write the example that defines a structure, uh, defines or declares multiple objects of the structure, pass it to a function, return it from a function. So it just summarizes all what we discussed, right? Using our monomial example. So here we just define our monomial. I guess, can you guys confirm you are seeing? We are good? Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So is there a way to make this a little bit bigger? Okay. Does it get bigger at your side? Yes. Yep. 
Okay, good, thanks. So, so here we define this structure. It has the two coefficients, like the normal one we have seen multiple times in previous slides. Inside the main, I'm declaring um, multiple objects of this structure, mono one and mono two. So, and initialize them and then mono three. And then later what I want to do, the ultimate target of this exercise is to do the product because we said this is representing an a monomial, right? Like for example, this one, is something around 0.3. This is resembling 0.3x to, to the power four, correct? This one is 3x to, to the power 10, right? So this is kind of the, the, the pro programmable representation of this monomial. I want to multiply these. So the output hopefully should be the multiplication of the two monomials. How to do this? I want to write a function that takes two input structures, mono one and mono two, and give me back the, the output structure. So just before jumping into the implementation of this, um, of this function, something to know is how I'm able to use monom here as a type, because you declared the structure as a global variable in your file, right? You will see in the lab that I define the student structure in a completely separate header file. I call it student.h, and then you can include the student.h here, right? So this is similar to just prototyping a function. So this is how main have access, has access to the type of structure, right, monom. Now, if we want to write this function, simply we know that it should return something of type monom. monom. Yep, and then I would call it product. And then it should take monom, mon one, the monom, mono two as input, correct? This is a prototype. You can see that I am using monom as if it's int. For example, if you are defining a product function for two ends, you would say product int x int y, right? So the same thing, I'm using it as if it's a normal type. Then later here, I can define my own uh, function. I just take the prototype and then here, let's see how to implement this, right? So what I want to do is I want to write my, uh, my product, how I can multiply two polynomials. Basically you multiply the coefficients and the add, add the powers, right? This is a simple math. So what you can do here is define a third, I can call it anything, result or output. And then I would say result dot, uh, coefficient assembly equal to mono one dot coefficient multiplied by mono two dot coefficient, right? You multiply the coefficients and then later you would add the powers, right? So it would be result dot power equal mono one dot power and then plus mono two dot power. And the last thing is I want to return this result. So I'd say return result, right? Now, if I want to check this, if it's working, for example, in the midterm, you were asked to check your function here, you call it, and then you would say, I want to print monom three. So you'd say print f mono three dot coefficient equal, the coefficient is float, so it's F space mono three dot, or maybe I just print them in a separate line, new line, mono three dot uh, power equal, Yes, and then it's an int. Now we do here mono three dot coefficient and mono three dot power. All right, so let's try this out. And run. Okay, so it gives you that mono three dot coefficient is dex, 
which is hopefully the multiplication of this by this, and the power is 14, which is added four plus 10, right? So is there any question before we play around with this example? Let me take questions. Yes, yes, like minus minus is just the, the decrement, right? Uh, I have a lag just now, what is the mean? Oh, okay, question, are keyword arguments like in Python supported when declaring structures? Keyword arguments, I'm not sure what you mean by keyword arguments, Noah. Uh, I'm not sure, please, if you can clarify, I can, I can try to answer this. How are we allowed to return a result? Why are we allowed? That's a good question because you are allowed to return a structure from a function, right? So this is a general rule. You are allowed to return a structure from a function uh, and the result is nothing other than a structure of type monom, right? Good. So now uh, let's play around a little bit with this. What if, for example, I want to bring, this is something that maybe not related to structures, but it's good to, to, to see or to understand that what we print here in printf is something that we can make a little bit human or, or representative. So if I want to bring this as something meaningful, I would say, uh, so, okay, I know that this is 0.3x to the power something. So what I can write is to say, uh, this is float, and then x, and then this, and then this should be d then times the same thing equal the same thing. So I'm representing, I'm representing it as if it's a monomial. And then here, I'm really requiring six inputs, one for each, like two for each monomial. So here I'm saying mono one coefficient, mono one power, mono two coefficient, mono two power and then mono three, mono three. And then let's run this one. So what you will see in the output here. Oh, did it? Yeah, so you see we represented it in a kind of a mathematical way, right? We said 0.3 x to the power four multiplied by negative 2.3 x to the power 10 equal to something. So it, it, you can really format your output in a way that is meaningful to you. If you are, for example, doing your summer project as like a calculator or something like this, it's better to have something in a meaningful output to the user, right? Okay, good. So what else we can, we can do? So let me ask you, what if I want to change? So we said if I'm passing a structure to a, a function as an input, you can really change them. You cannot really change them because they are passed by value, right? What if I want to change them? Assume, for example, I want to write a function that exchange two monomials, right? So let's say I'm defining a function here. In fact, exchanging is, okay, exchanging can be done easier, uh, but let's say, okay, let's say I, I want to do the following. I want to write another version of my product. I call it product two where I would say I want the first input to equal the second, the first input multiplied by the second input and then put the result back in the first input, right? You, you know this kind of operations where mono one equal mono one multiplied by mono two. So I want to change mono one, but I only pass them by value, so I cannot change it. What, what can I do? Can someone imagine what, what I need to pass in pointer, Nicole? Thank you, that's correct. We said before, anything you want to pass by reference, you really can pass a pointer into it because what you need is the address, right? So in this version, I can just pass a pointer to mono one and this would be simply it, right? And then in my second version, I can just simply say this should be void product two. This is a pointer. So here the first pointer is, is resembling passing by uh, by uh, by reference. As you can see here, the compiler showed me that, oh, you are using the dot operator for a pointer while you should be using the arrow operator, right? Because you cannot do this. So two different alternatives we discussed we can do. I can either do this 
And in this case, I have to use the brackets because the, the member operator or the dot operator has high precedence. And in this case, I want this to be also mono one. I don't need the result at all. And I want this to be mono one. And I'm, I'm not returning anything. So what are these two lines? I'm simply updating the coefficient one to include the multiplication of coefficient one by coefficient two. I'm using this to dereference because mono one now is a pointer. I'm doing this to dereference it to access the coefficient element. And then if I do this and I go here, and in this case, I would have to call product two, but it doesn't take any, it doesn't provide any output. So it should be just simple call. In this case, also I cannot pass mono one. Can someone suggest what I need to modify in the first parameter here? How to pass it by reference? And perfect, yeah, correct. So I would just do that because I need to pass to the address of mono one to the pointer. And then what I would print here is, this would be, first of all, I would just add a new line. And then here, this should be mono one. And then I would just draw stuff. So you can see the second one is showing me exactly the same result, right? But the only difference is um, I'm taking the output into mono one directly, right? Because I was able to modify it by passing it by reference through taking an input pointer to the structure rather than taking the structure itself. Is there any question? Do you need to put the brackets, Ishmael? Yeah, you, you need to, the reason is the dot operator and the arrow operator has the highest precedence across everything, right? So you need to put the brackets to do the dereferencing first before you do the dot operator. Now, that said, let's say I want to, to, to do a, a different implementation of this using the arrow operator. So how I would do it? In this case, I don't need the brackets. Ah, come on and I don't need the dereferencing, I can just replace this directly with the arrow. The same thing here. You know what, I can just even keep both, just show you that both are the same thing. So in this, in this line, I'm doing the dereferencing while, okay. Here I'm doing the dereferencing while here I'm doing the arrow operator. The arrow operator is the member of, if this is a pointer, while the dot operator is the member of if this is a structure, good? So for those that might get confused, this is the multiplication while this is the dereferencing. How the compiler knows this, the multiplication operator has both hand side and, and left side, left hand side, left side. So it has two operands while the dereferencing operator only has something on the right hand side. So the compiler knows this by something called abstract syntax trees. You don't need to care about this, but the compiler knows the difference between this asterisk and this asterisk, good? Is there any question in the difference between the arrow and the dot and how to pass something by reference, uh, how to pass a structure by, by reference for, for a function? Why can't we just return mono one normally without using a pointer? You can, yeah, Victor, for sure. This is what we have done in product function, but we were just discussing what if I want to modify an input parameter to the function itself, right? For example, sometimes you might need to modify both. And in a function, you cannot return two things in the same time. So in this case, you are forced to do passing by reference, right? Okay, so now let's discuss one, one, uh, one last thing before we, get, we go back to the slides. Assume I want to really modify both. Also, this is related to vector question. So I want to exchange, I want to write a function to exchange mono one and mono two. I would call it exchange. And then I would remove, remove the implementation for, or maybe I can reuse some of the code. And here, I would call this exchange. In this case, 
I want to modify both mono one and mono two, which means I, I really cannot return it. Right? I, ha I am forced to pass both by reference, right? Because you can only return one thing from a function. So how to exchange them? Simply just like re replace like both attempt variable, both the items there and do it one by one. We are going to do two implementations for exchange. One of them is straightforward, which is, which is related to something we need to discuss. Assume I want to define a temp variable and then similar to the exchange we, we usually do. And then I would say, I want uh, the temp first to take mono one. There is something wrong here that we will, I'll ask you about. And then I'd say mono one equal mono two. And then I would say mono two equal temp. Some of you already got this swap function or exchange function as part of the debugging question. There is something wrong in this implementation. What, what is that? Jack, I will come, in, I will come into your question right now. Jan, how do you referencing Vinay? Yeah, that's, that's correct. So mono one is a pointer. So if I'm assigning it to something, this is of type pointer. This is of type structure. So you cannot assign them to each other. What you need to do is to dereference the pointer to get the structure, right? And then really you don't want to ex exchange the addresses. You want to change the values. So you'd also do this here, right? So this is how you, you would exchange uh, monomials, monomial values. One important question is if I am assigning a structure to another structure, what does it really mean? Like I have many coefficient, sorry, many members, right? So I have the coefficient and the power here. So really how to assign a structure to a structure. What happens is if both structures are of the same type, you can assign a structure to a structure in C where the, like it will compare the members one by one. So the first member here will go to the first member here, the second will go to the second, et cetera, et cetera. And structure assignment is the only operation that is accepted for structures in C. For example, you cannot compare two, two structures. You cannot multiply two structures. You cannot subtract two structures. You only can assign a structure to a structure of the same type, right? If I want to implement it in another way, for example, what if I want to do a multiplication or something, you do what we have done here. Go through each member one by one and do the operations you want, right? Okay, for Jack question, which is why we are using, what is the difference between the arrow and the dot? The dot is simply used here, for example, if your object is a structure, right? There are, there are no pointers at, here, at, at, uh, at all here. It's just the variable structure, right? So the normal structure. While if you have a pointer that is pointing to this structure, you can use the dot operator, you have to use the arrow operator, right? So R works for the, for the pointers, why the dot works for the normal structures, good? Are we good? Is there any question before we, we jump back to slides? If, if you understand this example is what we have done, you really like got almost everything for today's lecture. So that's, that's, that's good. Can you return a structure because its name is not an address versus returning an array because structure holds multiple values with it? That's a good point, Nicole. You are correct. You cannot return an array from a function, although you can re return a pointer uh, to that array, and you can return a structure from a function because it's locked as a single variable, not multiple variables. So structures in C are not seen as data structures, like as, as something that holds multiple values. Everything within the structure is in fact just as if it's one entity, right? That's, that's a good question, thank you. Okay, so I will switch the sharing going back to the slides. So now I'm back into the slides. If, if you don't see it, please let me know. So we have discussed the product already. We have went through all the example here. We have done the thing and we return it back. And we also discussed product by reference. Uh, we have discussed this. 
we have also discussed using the, the arrow operator. Good. Yeah, operations or structures, we also discussed by example. We said assignment is accepted in C, so we can assign a structure to a structure of the same type. One question that I was expecting but I didn't get is, what if I, had, I define two structures, like for example, mono and bully, like for polynomial, for example, and then I assign one object from here to one object from here. This is not allowed. The compiler will give you an error. The reason is both structures for the assignment operation have to be of the same type. Otherwise, you cannot match like uh, members, right? So it will not work. You can also take the address of a structure through a pointer, which we have done. Something that is very interesting is you can use the size of operator. This size of is, is really a, a legend here because you can use it for anything, a pointer, an array, everything, even including structures. And uh, you cannot compare structures as we said. So let's say, um, yeah, so we have seen a very simple example of a structure that has members, but what, what, are the, what can be the members of a structure? We said ints, doubles are okay. You can also have a pointer, which is like the month here, which is a string of arrays, which it can also take an array as an input, uh, as, as a member. Assume for, and this is what you are going to do in your lab. The student structure would have a, a character array or a string for the first name and another one for the last name. Another interesting thing is a structure can in fact have another structure as a, its own uh, member. Like for example, here I'm defining a student structure that has the name and a variable that is called birthday of type date, right? So I'm defining here, I'm defining a variable of type structure as a member of another structure. That's also allowed. The only thing that is not allowed is to define a variable of the same structure student as a member of itself. So um, a structure cannot be a member of itself. Good, that's a general rule. Well, is there a way to go around this? Yes. How to do it? With our other legion, which is the pointer. So you can have a pointer to a structure of the same type as a member of this structure. Can someone think of anything that can this be useful? Like why this thing can be useful? It has a very, very common linked list mark. That's, that's, that's correct. So what is a linked list? You guys, we will see this by the end of this course. And two SI is all about this, this kind of data structures. Why I would need, so let me go back to the, my question for those who didn't get it. So why do I need a pointer of the same type of the structure as a member of my structure? Usually we only discussed array so far, but there is a very common data structure. When I say data structure is the way you organize your data in the memory, right? One of the very common data structures is linked list. In a linked list, you have a certain node or uh, like an entity or one entry in your in your uh, database or in your data structure. And then this one is pointing to the second one. This one is pointing to the second one. Pointing means has a pointer. It has the address of the second element, right? So now you need a pointer to this entity, but this entity and this one are of the same type, right? So this is, if this is a student, this is also a student, which means you need as a member of this data structure, a pointer to itself, right? This is how we build uh, linked lists out of structures and pointers in C. A, a little bit of kind of an advanced topic, we will come into it later, right? Okay, so another thing before we conclude, I know we are almost, are we over time? Let me check that. Good, so the last thing we discuss is arrays of structures. Like we discuss pointers of structures, but the structure is a normal, um, is a normal variable, which means you can declare, you can declare arrays of, right? I guess by, by checking the time, I just triggered uh, Google Assistant. Okay, good. So can I declare an array of structures? So for example, in the lab, you would need to create a list, it's dynamically created list of students. Okay, you just need to stop. Anything I would say, I believe Google would keep searching. So just put this away. Good, so I want to create then an array 
of structures just to construct my, my link. It is going back to the example I started the lecture with, which is in 2SH, we have 280 students. You just define one structure as a student, and then you have a list or an array of 280 of these, right? Going back to our monomial example, now I can create an array of type monomial where we have three elements, and then I initialize them as, as usual, right? Well, this is the first one, the coefficient will be this one, and the power will be this one, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Good. So the way, just to, to visualize this, the way this looks in memory is you have this array of three elements. Now the new thing is that each element is just not a single entry. It's of structure type where it has coefficient and power. And here you have coefficient and power, and here you have coefficient and power. This is how really it looks in memory, right? And to access a certain uh, to access a certain element here, for example, body two takes you to zero, one, two, which is this one. And then taking a certain element would be, or a member would be body two dot coefficient, which gives you this one. Good. So for example, body two coefficient here, this coefficient is the first one, this gives you six and the power gives you five, right? Okay, we start also playing around with the pointers, we know that Bully is the pointer of the, like the array name is a pointer to the first element. So saying Bully coefficient, can someone imagine what is this, what this might give me? Yes, negative 1.2, that's correct, because Bully, the array name is pointing to the first element, its coefficient is negative 1.2, and Bully plus one, goes to the second element and power gives you nine, correct? Good. So these are statically allocated arrays, not very interesting, a little bit more complication, let's dynamically define a, a list of structures. And really this is what you're doing in the lab. So if we are now building on top of the last lectures, so if you know last lecture, this is new, no new information for you. You are just dealing with a structure rather than dealing with ends or floats, right? What I'm doing here is I have a structure of type in blue E. And then what I'm doing is I'm doing a malloc for a list of, if you remember from last lecture, you first start by declaring your hash or the array of addresses or array of pointers, which it has the name in blue E. And this is why it's a double point because it's a pointer to a pointer. And then you say, I have 10 of those, which means you have 10. And each one of them is the size of a pointer of type in blue. And then later you have a for loop. Now the for loop goes into my drawing. So this is the one we will conclude with. So I know we might have reached the time. So no, this is your in blue. And this is your address, what we call your address uh, array, right? And then later for each one of them, you have, uh, you, 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 you would be doing uh, an allocation of a size in blue E. So what we do here is each one of this is going to have an in blue E structure and in blue E structure and in blue E structure, right? So one, one exercise you might try at home, something I was doing as a quiz previously is, now we do it simply because each one has a single entry, which is a single structure, right? What if really I want it to be similar to the previous lecture, which is multiple, multiple employees? Why I would put multiple employees in a 2D grid? You can think of, for example, each one of this is a department in your company, right? This is sales department, this is, um, like the second pointer is for, I don't know, marketing department, uh, engineering department, etc. So now you have a way of looking into all the employees of a certain department through this hashing or th through this address, uh, address array. But here is does a symbol of each one is going to point to a single structure, right? Then you enter them one by one, good. Is there any question here? So I, we are done with today's lecture, so you guys are free to leave. I would again remain for a few minutes to take questions. So again, uh, if you are not, so if you're talking about lab three, it's not a big deal. I'm aware of it. 
until Monday, if it, if, if, if it's still a problem with this, I believe GitHub will get it solved soon. But if it's not solved by, by, by Monday, I will let you know what you do. For lab two, what you would do is go back to Avenue. There is the assignment, uh, there is, sorry, the announcement where I put the starter code for lab two, download it from there, start developing your lab and send it by email to uh, Salah, like the TA responsible for, for the labs. Fardin, I made my own repo with lab two starter code, which I will be submitting, but to share the repo, do I need to add you as a collaborator? Fardin, yes, one problem with this is, first of all, you must make your repo private. Uh, otherwise, you will really get zero in your, in your lab, right? It has to be private because it means you don't want to, to share it with, with one. Yes, thank you. But the problem with GitHub individual accounts, if you have uh, a project as private, I'm not sure if it will allow you to add collaborators. So if you can add famous as collaborators, that's great. Uh, then add, yes, add us as collaborator. If not, then simply just send it by email to, to Salah, right? Can I ask a question about sure. test cases? Yeah. Um, for the third question, there's a constant N3, which gives you the size of the matrix for lab two. Um, so okay. our test case can only be a three by three matrix, right? Uh, this is the N, I guess, correct? Yes. Uh, yeah, for, for, for this use case. But if you want, you can modify N to be anything. I, I just put N as a, a generic number there. But if you want to modify N to another value, that's also... Okay, but I believe just to make it simple for you, yes, just keep testing only three by three matrices. Yeah, I did test it manually okay. putting different ones in, but you can't have like putting N3 is like a, I don't know, a global or constant variable. Yeah, it's defined. So it yeah, so you cannot, yeah. Can't have different sizes, right? Yeah, at, at one run, right? But for example, yeah. you can modify N to be another thing, but you rebuild and yeah, but, but yes, for one run, you cannot modify N because it's declared using define, which is as if it's a constant. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Yeah, welcome. Um, if you return a structure from a function, what happens to the memory that holds the structure? Since the structure was looked at to the function, but now the function is finished. Arjun, your question applies to any variable you return from a function, right? If a function returns an int, wouldn't your question apply? Because really what happens to the memory that is holding this int? The answer for this is the return value gets copied into another variable in the caller. For example, if you say int x equal I don't know, like multiply y plus z, the result itself, the value will be copied into x. So you wouldn't be losing the value, right? Um, okay, question, I made my own repo. Okay, so why my repo still shows as x even I pass all test cases. Lifing, if, if, you, if, if, if you pass all test cases locally, don't worry again, similar to lab two, don't worry about auto grader for now, right? If you, run, if you pass all test cases locally, that's what you need to care about. That's correct. Actually, you cannot run three by three and four by four in the same run. It's either or, that's correct. Eric, who is the lab TA again? Salah Gamal, like the email is S-A-L-A-H-G-A at MacMaster.ca. And you guys have all this information in uh, lecture zero and uh, the outline of the course. Sandy, is there a feedback for lab one? So Sandy, you can, uh, you can come to office hours or even send me an email to, to discuss it. I guess you already sent me an email just before the midterm, but I, I was busy with, with handling the midterm. Um, yeah, so sorry for that. I would say, let me look into, so sorry, can, can you reply to your email? Just remind to get it in the top of my list. And I would, uh, I would, I would look into what you would, uh, why you would lose some grades. So, generally, the rule is the following, especially for lab one. Some of you either use the math functions, or why they were allowed, they were asked not to use it, and for this, I guess they they lost either two grades or five. I don't remember. And the second one is some of you their code didn't compile, so they had compiler errors that we had to fix to be able to run it, and those also lost partial grades. Right? These are the only two reasons I'm aware of that some of you lost grades uh, other than just not passing all the tests. Other re and some other reasons is you didn't add your own tests for every function, right? 
Ishmael. If I made a test case for four by four and keep it commanding out, is that enough to make a test for question three? I would say don't change N, Ishmael. Just make it easy. Test only three by three. Just focus on the values rather than the metric size because really the metric size is not interesting, right? I mean, if your code works for three by three, most probably it's going to work for, for four by four fine, right? Because your code is independent of the size. You are using N as a variable, right? So don't change N. I would rather change the values in the test case. Okay, so if there is no more, is there any question that I missed in the chat? Um, can I ask some question about the lecture? Sure. Like you were mentioned about the link list, but I'm not kind of clear with it. Sure, D don't worry about uh, link list for now. Are you Yan Hao? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so don't worry about link list for now. We will discuss them in detail when we come into uh, data structures in Java briefly. So the mm -hmm. only idea, so let me just mention again what you, want, what you want to know from this one is you can have a structure that one member of it is a pointer to the same structure. And then I was saying why you might need this. You might need this because one element, you still, you still are able to see my screen, I guess. So yeah, assume yeah, yeah. I define object one from this structure, object mm -hmm. two from this structure, and I want to connect them together for some reason. This is called linked less, but it doesn't really matter. You just won't have a chain of the objects together. So you want this one to have the address of the second one, right? So you are take, so you are allowed to taking the value from both structure? You, what you would be allowed to do is to have a member here that is a pointer, assume both are of type yeah, yeah, student. Like, yeah. I mean, so you can access those data in the object? For example, object. that's correct, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. We will and discuss this in, in, in detail later. So if you really don't 100% get it, it I, I can understand that, yeah. I see. And about the assignment of the structure, I'm just wondering, like, as you say, like the, if you want to assign a structure equal to another structure, they must have the same type. The same type, I, correct. I'm just wondering, like, could that be two different structure? Like, for example, you have employee, and then you have the, uh, for example, the integer for the for the employee number, and they they name as character array, okay. and then you have a second structure, named student with. I see, and has, where it has the same members, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's not allowed. No, they allowed. have okay. yeah, they have to be of the same type, like including be, even if all the members are the same. This doesn't. This is not allowed in, 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 in C. I see. They have to have the same structure name. Correct. Structure I mean, type. same type. Yeah, because the structure is seen as a type. So even if, for example, okay. I will give you an example, although it's not really a, a, a real matching example because you can do this through casting, but it's not about the value. Ints and floats. These are two different types, correct? While I can represent any value, for example, one can be int and can be float, right? But yeah. there are some operations that I can do, for example, in floats that I cannot do in end while the value is still the same, right? So, so this, this is because of the different type. So it has to be the same type. In this case, the type is the structure name. You are correct. So that means mm -hmm. they must have the same structure name. Yeah. I see. And I still have a question with the structure. Like you can have a pointer as a member of the structure, right? Correct. If you have a pointer like um, as a member, can you still pass that? Can you still return that structure in one function? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's that you can still return it. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, you always can return a structure even if it has an array, not even a point. Yeah. I see. And I have uh, one, one thing last, I have a question with the thing I miss. When you have a my, my, minus, and then a pointer with an arrow. Which one does it run first? Uh, this is something that we had here. Uh, yeah, I guess I got a lagging. This one, I'm I guess. Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one goes like it's always the arrow the member of operator has the highest residence. So okay. it's yeah. So it, this goes first, and then, and then it minus. subtracts the coefficient. That's correct. It doesn't subtract the pointer, it subtracts the coefficient. Yeah, 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 I see. Thank you.
and welcome. Wow, so when we refer to our member, we have to use the member name to refer to the certain name. That's correct, that's correct, Moaz. Like for example, mono.coefficient, so yeah. Um, Mark, I have not received your push for the midterm solutions. We had this, yeah, so Mark, if you, if you are this guy who had, yeah, I, I'm not sure to be honest what is going on with your settings in the repo. The only thing I'm suspecting is you might have another GitHub account because it doesn't, uh, I need I need to set and check that with you, uh, but I will I will upload them as I have done for the midterm. So thanks for letting me know. Can, can you please send me an email just to make sure I don't forget? Send me an email with this and I will I will upload it for you. Sure thing. But this won't affect the ability for you to see the midterm that I pushed, right? I do. I I, um, I guess I can see your solutions. Uh, you know okay. what? Maybe maybe I'm not also very sure. That's also a good point. Yeah, because like uh, I, this is the problem that I didn't want to face with. Correct, with correct, correct, correct. Send me an email oh. and I will check, right? Okay. If I wasn't able to see, then I guess what I can do is I go back directly to, to, to the browser because I can still access your repo in the browser. Right. So I, okay. I, would, I, I would ask that he is to, to grade it on the browser then, yeah. Okay. Good. But, All right, but I'll please send, send me an email, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Hi, um, I just have a quick question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, would we just be able to quickly go through the structures and pointers again? Um, I wasn't exactly clear on that part. Sure, sure, sure. No worries. Yeah. Structures and so I guess I'm I can do this through uh, the practical example. It would be better. So let me go back to the compiler here. Good. So the simple thing is the following. So if you deal with structures as normal variables, like an int or anything, and you know that a pointer can simply point to any type, then this implies a pointer can point to a structure, correct? Yeah. Right? So which, which, which is just like the only thing that we, we need to know about this now. So uh, I can define a pointer, for example, here, I'm defining a pointer of type mono one, and I'm passing into it the address of the structure. Let me take it in an easier way. So something I can do here, I can say monom, and then this is my pointer. So I'm just defining here a pointer of type monom, right? Later, I can assign it the address of mono two, right? So what happens is, the pointer is taking the address of the structure because it's of the same type, which is monom, correct? This is very similar to if mon, uh, like mono2, for example, was an int, it would be exactly the same way, no change here, right? Then the only thing that, that is different is we know that structures have elements or members inside them, right? To access them through the pointer, we, what we can do simply is to say my pointer and then use the arrow operator, this is a new operator here, and then this gives us access to the elements of the, uh, for example, I would say 2.3. So this gives us access to the elements of this uh, structure we are pointing to, right? If I have done this through the name of the structure itself, I would be using the dot, right? 4.3. So you see that this, this is basically the main difference here. If you are asking the members through the pointer, you do the arrow. If you are asking the members through the structure itself, which is this one, you do the dot operator, right? So okay. if, if I go back to the slides and let me try to write something here. So how to visualize this? Somewhere in the memory here, we have our mono two. It has coefficient and it has power. I defined my pointer. I made it of type mono, and then I made it point to this uh, mono two, correct? So this is how it looks in memory. If you want to access this coefficient, I'm telling you that there are two ways to access it. The first one is through the structure itself, forgetting about the pointer at all. So you do mono two dot coefficient. That's the normal way of accessing any structure. But given that you already defined a pointer to this structure, there is another way of doing it through the pointer, which is my pointer and 
arrow and then coefficient. Good. Is is it clear now? Mm -hmm. I, I think so. If 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 there are further questions, yeah, go, go ahead. Um. So just a quick question. Sure. Um. So mono ha also have a size, and so the mono the size of normal will be the 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 um. I mean, such as the int or the yeah load. mono so the two mono size si will be. It would be the Which total size the of all places. the members. Correct. Yeah, yeah it would yeah. be the total size of all the yeah. members. For example, coefficient is float, so it would be eight bytes, for example. Uh, end is four bytes, then it gives you a total of 12 bytes. This is the size of the mono. That's yeah, I just want to make sure. Yeah, yeah thank, okay. you. thank you. Um, something I would suggest to really grasp this is try to write the example yourself. Like all the, for example, the multiplication example we have went through using pointers, non pointers, and then compare with the with the slide, it will help all of you grasp what is the difference between axing the structure directly or axing it through a point. Good? Okay. Um, also, sorry, I just want to ask you one more thing. So, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, what does the product by ref say mean at the bottom? Yeah, so this is a function that we want to define. So simply it's, it's a function that we want to write where we pass the values by reference. So if you, if you go here, so remember, we have done this also in the in our implementation in the example here. So where we had the second version of the product, which is product two, right? We said that the difference between product two and product is that in product, we are passing all the members by value, which means the product function cannot really change mono one or mono two, right? It only reads them. This is what is meant by passing by value. What if I want the function to modify them? For example, in product two, I wanted mono one to hold the output of the multiplication. So in this case, I want mono one to change. I cannot pass it by value, so I need to pass it by reference. The only way to do this is to pass a pointer to the structure rather than passing the structure itself. And going to the implementation of product two, now I'm allowing mono one to change because I have its, its address, right? So this is what is meant in the slide by passing by reference. So it's, or sorry, product by reference, which is our implementation in product two in the example, right? Right. So, so I, I guess one way to also grasp this pretty well is to go back to, I guess our functions, our functions lecture, where we discussed both passing by value and passing by reference, and we have some animation there that explains the difference between both, right? So maybe refreshing your mind with, with this example will help you understand the, the differences between both, passing by reference and passing by value. It's in, if I remember correctly, it's in the function, function lecture, right? Okay, thank you. Good, welcome. Okay, perfect. Thanks, everyone. And I. Uh, uh, hi. Go ahead. Uh, excuse me. Can, can I ask a question in the last slide? Sure. Last slide. Okay, thank you. Oh uh, yeah, last slide. Okay. I guess it's the dynamic allocation. Yeah. Oh uh, yes. So um, for the uh, scan F, the PI name, the pointer to uh, the point, the name of the pointer. Uh, to the structure, so uh, it doesn't have the end uh, character. Does it mean that the uh, the point uh, the the name of this uh, structure pointer uh, is a address? Okay, that's 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 a good question. So let's think of what is this variable, right? This is the name, right? The name here okay. is an array, right? Yeah. Do you remember that when we pass an array to a function, we don't really need to pass the address because the array will get passed by reference by default because the array name is just an address of the first element anyway, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's the reason. While for the salary, for example, salary is an int. So if I want to modify it, I have to pass its address, right? Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, so have have a great day, everyone, and I I will see you. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, go yes, ahead, go ahead. Really no worries. Question. No worries. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so just both, such as an employee and a monon, we can decide. It, actually, we can decide the name by ourselves. It's not a defined name yet. Oh yeah, yeah. It's an any name that you can get. 
yeah, sure. It's okay. this is any valid name. You can give it to the structure. That's correct. Thank so you. this is not a reserved word, right? Mm -hmm. So you can type def is a reserved word. Structure is a reserved word, but this yeah, one is it. not. Yeah. Um, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, just a quick question. Do we yeah. have any lab session today? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there is a lab session at uh, 2.30. That's correct. And, and uh, also the office hours are running, I guess they are running now until 2.30 as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you know where can we find it? Because... Um, uh, you mean the lab session? Yeah, yeah. Like that's yeah, a Zoom link, right? I guess it's... it's uh, Send what I would, Avenue. yeah, it's yeah, sent by Avenue for those who Avenue. have the lab session for today. So I don't think you have your lab session today, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you don't have it, then I would say go to the office hours, not the lab session, because the lab session is specific for uh, for those students in this lab session, right? So, so okay. basically, the rule was that you are not allowed to attend any lab session except yeah, yeah, yours. Yeah. While office hours, you just go to any office hour. That's correct. Um, office is that your office hour or TA? Oh no, the TA the TA office hour link. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Okay. Uh, have a good night, everyone. There is something on the chat. Okay. Thanks, everyone. To refer to the first. So, Moaz, are you around? Uh, let me see. Okay, Moaz already left. So, okay, good. So, talk talk to to you later then, uh, guys, next week, and have a great weekend. Bye bye.